Hello everyone! In today's video, I continue with the 91 Firebird Drift build by completing the body, using a variety of techniques and custom parts to give the car a rough and weathered drift missile style appearance. Recently I've had the opportunity to continue to make some progress on the 124 scale Firebird Drift build. This has been an ongoing project that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, but for those who aren't, I've been gradually transforming this dirt cheap 124 scale model car that I got off of eBay a while back into a super scale, fully functioning RC car. A lot of time has been spent working on the mechanical aspects of the car, as well as getting all of the electronics wired and installed. With all of that complete, I can now move on to the more simple and fun parts of the build, such as working on the body and interior. As I've discussed before, I want to go with sort of a drift missile inspired look. I like the primer grey appearance that the body currently has, and I want to retain the basic look, but add some more depth and realism to the body, as I'll be showcasing throughout this video. To keep with the drift missile look, I designed these front and rear pieces that I will be installing instead of using the kit's front and rear bumper pieces. These custom parts were designed to replicate the appearance of the body underneath where the bumpers are mounted. I showed the design process of these custom parts in a previous video. This was the first time I've ever attempted to build a car in this style. All of the models and RC cars that I've built have always had a shiny, factory-style paint job, so this has definitely been a learning experience for me and a nice opportunity to experiment with some different techniques. The first thing I wanted to do was figure out a way to mount the hood so that it is still removable, but I don't have to worry about it falling off while driving. Fortunately, the hood sits pretty securely, even without anything to keep it from sliding. To prevent the hood from moving, I decided to use some small magnets that are 2mm in diameter. I drilled two holes, one on each side that the magnets will fit into. I started with a small drill bit to create a pilot hole, and then used larger bits to make the holes a little over 2 millimeters. Once the holes were large enough, I pressed the magnets down into each hole, and then test fit the hood to make sure that the magnets aren't causing it to sit too high. Once I was satisfied with the position, I started by gluing the lower magnets to the body. I then glued the upper magnets to the bottom side of the hood, being careful not to apply too much glue so the upper magnet is only secured to the hood and not the body. After allowing the glue to dry, as you can see, the upper magnets are now secured to the hood while the lower magnets are secured to the body. These magnets will prevent the hood from moving while driving. To make sure that the upper magnets are solidly secured to the hood, I applied a little bit more glue around the outer edge. The next thing I wanted to do was secure the front and rear panels to the body. Both of these pieces were printed using a FDM printer, so I needed to do some sanding in order to smooth out the surface. After that, I used super glue to secure each piece. Using a similar technique, I wanted to add some body damage to the car by heating up the plastic and deforming it. This is something that I've seen a lot of other people do, however I've never attempted it myself. At first I used the heat from a lighter, but I found it to be a bit overkill, so I tried using the heat produced by a soldering iron, which seemed to work a lot better, though it required a bit more patience. I experimented with some different techniques of using different items to create dents and other damage around the body. 
I didn't want to go crazy by adding a dent or damage to every square millimeter of the body, instead I just wanted to keep it relatively subtle, especially being inexperienced with doing this. Adding realistic dents, damage, and rust to a small body like this is a real art, and it's something that I'm sure is going to take some time and experience to get really good at. I then used sandpaper and some files to add some more dents and scrapes to the body. One thing that I thought turned out really nice was to remove some material from a relatively sharp edge like this fender to make it look like it has a dent. I also cut away this section of side trim to make it look like it's fallen off. After that I used a drill and a hobby knife to remove one of the side marker lights from the fender. I used the back side of the blade to deepen some of the panel lines. I positioned each fender flare and marked its position and then used a rotary tool to remove some material from the upper part of each wheel arch. At this point I was satisfied with how the body looked as far as adding damage. I was really pleased with how the body was looking so far. As I've said, this was my first time doing something like this, so I'm not really sure what the best techniques or tools are for doing this type of thing. I know there are a lot of talented builders in the audience, so if any of you know of any good techniques, let me know below in the comments. I'd appreciate any info. Before I moved on to painting, I wanted to sand the transition between the rear piece and the rest of the body so that it is flush. I also used some filler to help smooth the transition. With that complete, I was now ready to move on to applying some paint. Just like with adding the damage, doing a weathered or project car style paint job, or I guess more like a primer job in this case, is something that I've never attempted, but I was still able to achieve a nice result. Before I did anything, I wanted to mask off the struts so that no paint would get on them. I decided to start by painting the underside of the hood. As you can see, there's a lot of bare white plastic showing. Obviously, this isn't a super critical part of the vehicle, as it won't really be visible, so I just sprayed some flat black paint over the entire surface. I then began applying some flat black paint to other parts of the body. As I've said before, I do want to retain the primer gray look. However, before doing so, I want to add some black as sort of a base coat before lightly applying the primer to give the car a little more depth. I want to make it look like the primer was applied haphazardly with minimal masking and show some wear rather than a fresh uniform coat. You'll see me shaking the airbrush a lot. This is somewhat for effect, but the main reason is I only put a small amount of paint into the airbrush, so I keep it moving in order to keep the paint flowing. Here's how it looked after two coats. Next, I masked off the right front fender so I can paint it a different color to make it look like this fender was from a different car. I mixed up some relatively dark blue paint and lightly applied it to the fender. Giving that some time to dry, I mixed up some grey paint to apply to the hood, again to make it look like it doesn't match the rest of the car. Music 
After that, I painted the right door red. Here's how it looks so far. As you can probably tell, the tape removed some paint from a few spots due to the short amount of time I allowed the paint to dry. In this case, it won't be an issue as it only adds to the effect that I'm going for. I moved on to hand painting a few details such as the door handles and some side trim as well as the weather stripping around the windows. I really didn't need to worry too much about making it too accurate since these small imperfections won't be visible after I apply the mist coats of primer. I also went ahead and applied it more heavily in certain areas where I wanted more of the black to show through. While waiting for that to dry, I sanded the headlight parts and the radiator that I printed earlier. I then painted the headlights flat black. With the flat black paint still in the airbrush, I painted visible parts of the inside of the body. I also very lightly applied some of the flat black into areas that I had just painted earlier, and I finally went over the entire body with some primer. I wanted to apply the primer thick enough so that the body looks relatively uniform, but not too thick so that all of the paint that I applied underneath won't be visible. The result ended up looking great. One thing that I think would have made it look even better is if I made some adjustments and sprayed the primer close to the body in a lot of small passes like you would with a rattle can on a full size car, rather than from far away like I did here, which resulted in some relatively large spray. So far the body is looking great, but I still wanted to add some more detail. I went around and sanded some of the sections where I wanted more of the paint underneath to show up. I made sure to use a fine grit sandpaper and not to remove too much. I used a brush to apply some primer to a few spots, sort of blotting it on to make it look thick to replicate body filler. I then thinned out some flat black paint to create almost a wash and carefully applied it to sections and in some spots I would wipe off the excess with a paper towel. It ended up being a nice way to add some subtle details to parts of the body. Like with some of the stuff that I did earlier, I didn't want to add too much and leaned on the side of using it sparingly. The next parts of the body that I wanted to work on were the engine bay and the wheel wells. I actually sort of like how it looks right now. If it wasn't for parts of the white plastic underneath showing through, I'd consider just mostly leaving it as is. I thinned out some flat black paint and brushed it onto the inner fender sections and in the engine bay. The brushed on thin paint retained some of the dirty and uneven look that it had previously, which I liked. The only details I added to the engine bay were painting the washer fluid and coolant tanks. 
I mix some tan and white paint to try and replicate the sort of off-white, yellowish appearance these plastic tanks get with age. Once the paint that I used for the headlights was dry, I glued them to the underside of the pop-up headlights. Next I was ready to install the fender flares that I designed and printed in a previous video. They're not a perfect fit for this body, so I needed to use a generous amount of glue in order for them to be secured. I made sure to use glue that will dry clear since I knew that there would be excess. I did my best to wipe away as much excess as I could. After all the flares were in place, I installed the front bash bar using two small screws. The windshield had a lot of smudges and little scrapes on the surface. As I've done previously, I used some Meguiar's Plastex to polish the windshield. I then used some more clear drying glue to secure it to the body. Here's a look at the finished body. I really couldn't be happier with the finished result, especially being that this was the first time I've attempted to build a car in this style and really wasn't sure what to expect but I definitely want to do some more weathered cars like this in the future, since I really enjoyed the build process. You may notice some of the glue around the fender flares, although dries clear, has more of a shiny finish, which sort of clashes with the body surrounding it. I'll probably just let it go, but a little bit of careful sanding could probably get rid of that. I quickly mounted the body onto the chassis just to see how it looks with the body in place. As I had anticipated, it's more of a snug fit now because of the body damage that I added earlier. All I need to do is remove a little bit of material from certain sections of the chassis in order for it to fit a little easier. It's really got the drift missile style look that I was trying to achieve. Although a Firebird isn't really the first car you would think of to make a build like this, I really like how it looks and it makes it even more of a unique build. The only things left to do are going to be to complete the interior and do a little bit of work on the chassis. If you haven't yet seen it, be sure to check out the previous video where I design and test fit a custom roll cage that I'll be using with this car. For those who are interested in getting the parts that I'm using for this build and are wondering when they will be for sale, I will definitely be adding some of these parts to the store before the end of December, but in the meantime I'll be making the files available to Maker Tier Patreon supporters, so anyone there will have the option of downloading the STL files and printing the parts themselves. I appreciate everyone's patience both with the video uploads and with the products. I've grossly underestimated the demand and interest in the FFR SC1 and MA10, so keeping up with the orders and keeping things in stock has been a challenge, as well as it's pretty much eaten up all of my free time that I usually spend making videos, hence the lack of uploads recently. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who has been ordering products. The support is highly appreciated. And I also really appreciate everyone who has sent me pictures of your FFR SC1 builds. I'm blown away by the creativity and quality of the builds I've seen. 
And I want to conclude today's video by showcasing some of the amazing vehicles and projects that have been posted in the Make It RC Facebook group. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.